produce? Is there a space for that? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Juan, uh, for having me uh, here today. And also, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, you've put your hand at a very important point. Indeed, uh, Asia uh, is the growth pole of the world economy. And um, it has learned to widen up its, poli uh, its policy space. Uh, in fact, Asia at this time uh, is rethinking and reinvesting in itself. If it has traded itself out of the crisis in 1997, this time round, it has financed itself out of the crisis. But at the same time, uh, it is challenged. It is challenged uh, with the question on how can the region sustain its growth, its wealth generation, and the dynamism in the medium term beyond the exit of its expansionary policies. Because Asia, whilst it has its economic powerhouses, it has great inequalities and growing inequalities. Just to give you some figure, uh, the national income share of the top 20% of the population has steadily increased while that of the bottom 20% has decreased. And across the countries, LDCs has displayed only a quarter of the average income level of all Asia-Pacific countries, despite the high growth of the region as a whole. Now, the fact that it cannot trade itself out of the crisis uh, precisely because the developed countries have to restrain their debt fuel consumption in coming years as they unwind their global imbalances, the Asia is rethinking itself in terms of how does it generate alternative sources of demand. And, and in fact, uh, how does it mitigate the potential loss of demand in the West? And in, in so doing, it has taken the challenge of inequality and poverty reduction. People are talking about this at the policy level. With 980 million people in poverty and white gaps remaining in the MDG achievements, infrastructure and other development gaps between and within the countries, the region indeed has much headroom for expanding aggregate demand for sustaining growth if it can deal with these issues and if it, if it can actually build on income security. Now, by focusing attention on poverty reduction and closing development gaps, in fact, the challenge can be turned into an, an opportunity. And in this way, uh, poverty reduction, inclusive growth, an MDG achievement would be critical, it is seen as critical for sustaining the region's new drivers of growth in the coming years. Now, what are the policy agendas, the five policy points, uh, the five points uh, uh, agenda that the region has been talking about? One that has been brought up several times is the need for job-led growth. Uh, in fact, Asia's wealth has been generated through, recently, unfortunately, through greater capital inflows and uh, speculative cap uh, capital inflows as that, uh, what has been referred to as a downside risk. And therefore, the, the shift to greater incentive for job creation, especially in the situation of uncertainty and risk and, and the volatility that, that we have seen. I think the need for decent jobs and better quality jobs, because whatever it is, many of the jobs are still in the informal sector. And, and, and with the, the need to, to try to deal with the labor market segmentation is still a critical issue. So the role of the market in that it would be critical. I think the, the role of uh, the fact that the, the financial crisis came together also with other crises, including the food fuel uh, price volatility, is critical because that price and food uh, price uh, changes, the, the volatility has in fact pushed in 2011 alone 
42 million people in Asia back into poverty, even though the high growth in, in China, in uh, uh, India, and in the middle-income countries have gotten uh, more than half of the people out of the poverty equation. And therefore, to reverse the neglect of agriculture in public policy is something that many countries are doing, focusing on agricultural growth and on rural development, because many of the poor people are still in the rural sector. And therefore, uh, investing, especially um, in small farmers and in food, uh, food security in the context of sustainable agriculture. Uh, in fact, countries like Indonesia is in fact talking about a new green revolution based on sustainable agriculture. I think the third uh, issue that's on the policy agenda is, financial, uh, it is actually financing for development, building the capacities of the least developed countries uh, through inclusive uh, financing and the poor, uh, through inclusive financing to build up their productive capacities so that they can actually participate in the market. And I think here the, um, the role of the market and the state is also critical because the, the, the role of the state in Asia has been critical. In fact, in, it has, many of the states have been developmental states and states that, are, that deals with redistribution, uh, be it in terms of education, in terms of, of, of uh, health care, and also in terms of uh, closing some of the, of the uh, infrastructure, the social infrastructure gaps. Uh, uh, very quickly, uh, I think the other uh, fourth uh, agenda uh, is the closing of the infrastructure gaps. In fact, uh, we have this, uh, shown that um, uh, what is needed if we are to deal with the infrastructure gap, Asia needs something like $800 billion per annum. And these are huge investments that has brought into play public-private partnership, but also a rethinking about how do we develop a regional financial architecture that could not take place in the 1997 financial crisis because the monetary fund at that time was not very supportive of it. But where, where, what are the elements of this regional financial architecture that can actually use the reserves that were accumulated from the 1997 financial crisis of over five trillion dollars and how to in fact use this to invest in closing the development gaps in, including the infrastructure gap. And finally the development of a regional market, a stronger regional market or an open forms of regionalism in the context of globalization. And here, uh, the, uh, the issue of connectivity is a critical one. Uh, ASCAP has been pushing the, uh, the agenda with ASEAN Plus 6 on the regional connectivity agenda, where many of the stimulus packages uh, has been spent on looking at how do you, up do you upgrade the Asian highway, how do you upgrade the trans-Asian railway, how do you create an intermodal transport system, how how do we negotiate now for a dry port treaties so that we can build economic corridors that bring into play the landlocked countries, the least developed countries, and to link them with the more prosperous uh, uh, coastal areas of, of Asia. But I think one, one of the critical things, because Asia has taken the, the, the lead, and I'm sure we'll hear from Korea in the G20 for a long time, is to deal with price volatility. Uh, and, th and that is, 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 is a critical, and how can the G20 actually put a bandwidth across the volatility in food, in fuel, as well as in the, the, the commodity. So the, the issue of economic governance and, and Asia's role in that is also very, very, very critical. And I just uh, want very quickly uh, to, to, to end by saying that uh, it is uh, the need for social protection is absolutely critical, and this is not seen as a cost anymore, but is seen as an investment in building up what you have called the social floor uh, in order to ensure that there is any it is income security to participate in the market. And, and, and in this, when we're talking about the connectivity agenda, it is not just the, soft, or the hardware of connectivity, but also the, the software of connectivity where there is trade uh, uh, regimes being integrated because there are the noodle bowl effect 
in Asia, uh, where uh, many countries uh, trade uh, at, at, at the bi bilateral level. And here, I just want to say that, that the software of connectivity, and I would end here, has to take into account the changing uh, the, uh, uh, population patterns in Asia, where there's also an aging population together with uh, the rise in new population, in youth population in some countries. And therefore, the issue of how do we invest in the care economy is critical as well. So let me stop here. Thanks a lot, Noreen, for a very really comprehensive answer. <clears throat> I think